Hello everyone, Corn here and welcome to my channel. We're up in the craft room and real quick wanted to show you a couple of cards that I've been working on. I worked on, um, the last time we did a uh, chat and craft with me, we did a uh, B card then also. I worked on another one, haven't been feeling 100% lately so I went ahead and instead of even film that I just sent it on. Then I did this one, which is, boy, that is a very wide tag I tried to do. <laughs> and uh, this is another little tag on top of that, and as you see, it moves. But the thing is, I have a punch from Hobby Bobby that gives that great uh, top to a tag, and <laughs> and that's why this can move quite a bit because it punches the hole for you. you know normally we would do it so that it would be a tighter fit there but it still works this uh, little brad is from Bo Bunny um, the series the butterfly kisses let me get that a little closer and then this punch let's see that's um, this punch is from the paper studio that's Hobby Lobby also this little piece of muslin is from Hobby Lobby too got it 75% off about two years ago this is that wonderful wonderful paper pad I showed you guys um, and my last was it my last haul or haul before online it uh, from Amazon it is just absolutely gorgeous I wish you all could feel this and see it has a sheen to it this paper with all the bees on it this uh, the spelling of bees these stickers came from Tim Holtz and then the little tiny center of that one is the liquid pearls and bisque just a series of little dots there. These flowers are Hobby Lobby. And you, I had to be very careful because they put these little wooden beads in the center with glossy accents. And normally that's just great. But when I put this in the card, I mean card, envelope, it took that one off. I had to re-glue that one. And then you open them. This is a die cut. I'm not quite sure where I got that. I'd have to look that up. Um, that I put over the back of the brad and that's just a little honeycomb and bee and then this is part of the paper pad again I fussy cut this tiny bead out this hello die again not sure where that's from and then I made this as in my last one um, thank you Maida Acosta I took apart one of her many beautiful envelopes that she had made and sent me goodies in. Traced it on this very nice, this is a heavy, heavy Cheerios box, it isn't their lighter one. And um, I've been cutting these out and then inking around in um, fossilized amber ink. These Precious bumblebees are from Hobby Lobby. I got those on sale. Oh, I can show you those. These went down to a dollar. This is their old, remember they're orangey now, their old sale price. It was two years ago. And I got two of them and I've used all of them with these. <laughs> um, and I think that just about tells you about that one. And just this is the paper that has just the little spots of honey on it. <laughs> so that's another one. And then I did this one, which again, the same die here. Well, it's a nesting die. Then I went ahead and put a little bit of my coffee dyed lace. That's from BB Crafts. I did coffee dyed lace because this is you see this wildflower it's Queen Anne's lace <laughs> so I thought that'd be kind of fun um, the same punch I showed before but in um, the paper is a 
pale lilac color. Then the centers of these, I've learned to do, if I, let me see, oops, I should have pulled this already. Just a regular, just a regular paper hole punch, you know, these guys. And then I take my um, Distress Ink and Mustard Seed and, you know, keep patting it, patting it to give it that effect. And then this washi, guys, I don't know. There it is. I have no idea where I got that. Looks, I think I've had that for a couple of years, too. Then you open this one up. And here for me to write my message on. And then this little teeny tiny flower. It's two flowers put together. And then a little bit of um, stickles in the middle. And then above that. from That's from the same paper pad. There's the um, honey drops I was telling you all about. And then. Let's see. What ink did I use? Oh, it's um, Wilted Violet. It's the Distress Oxide and that. And then Fussy Cut the Queen Bee out. And then Handmade by Corn. Okay. And then we're going to work on the last one I'm going to do together. Okay. And I, and I did a few things already because you know it takes me forever. But I had a friend write in my last chat and craft with me and say, I craft and put you on while I'm crafting. I thought it was so sweet that I thought, okay. Let's do another one together, okay? And we'll do more than I did before. <laughs> but remember, if ever I do more than before, it it takes a good long while because I'm not I'm not quick when it comes to crafting. Never never have been. So one thing I did, this is where I traced around my my Cheerios. <laughs> my box and you can go this way or this way and I'm gonna go that way too well that way today and um, I love that it's two-sided isn't that paper gorgeous and what I did to get this as you see this uh, blue is what they call periwinkle blue which means it has a tiny bit of red in it to, it's got like a lavender blue look to it so what I did, I didn't have periwinkle blue ink. So what I did was take my Distress Oxides and Wilted Violet and Broken China and did the violet first, then the Broken China. And I thought, since I, were, I wasn't, I thought, well, maybe y'all want to do it with me. I'm not through inking everything up. So let's do that together. Sorry, that's not, I thought my... Uh, Matt was clean. I apologize for that. But then again, I shouldn't apologize for that because remember, all these things that we think, you know, are so crucial. When you're crafting, mm -mm, you know, I try to go a little bit light on this wilted violet because I just kind of want a hint of it. But I want it under there so I can get the periwinkle blue. Because the broken china, if you ask me, is more like, almost like a turquoise blue. And that's not what we've got here. So how are you all doing? Let's have a look at felt a hundred percent but you know it doesn't help to complain does it and plus I, I'm holding on holding on to the good stuff that's it that's what's important doing what I can you know to feel better 
a little bit more here. Okay. I think that's all. Do I want to go in? Nah, I'm going to leave that alone. Just leave it on the outside. Then pull it up and see the purple flowers inside. Okay. All right. Ooh, way too much on that one. You can tell that this is brand new. Oh, boy. <laughs> see, you can see it change when you, when you do a little lighter. Mercy. That was really a lot of ink on that. Ooh, it's still in some places. trying to get the color needed if we've got the stuff, don't we? We'll fiddle till we get what we want. Fiddle with it, deal, say that. I'm gonna fiddle with these colors. Eee. I'm gonna put this on over here so it'll blot it a little bit. Do y'all do that too if you need the ink not to be so strong? Have you ever blotted on something in the, that you've thrown away in the trash can? <laughs> I do. Okay. I think I've got just a couple more spots to do. And then we can move on. And I have tried it just the, on a scrap piece of paper, just the blue, and it's awfully turquoise to me. Okay. There we go. Yeah, see when it comes out and it's not, doesn't have the purple underneath it, you see more of a turquoise look. And we got them all. Mm -hmm. That's all I want to do. How's the weather in y'all's neck of the woods? Mine, it's rather humid and sticky. But the thunderstorms are coming, they say. So, see. Look at that now. Do y'all do this too? Are y'all really sparingly using your baby wipes because of um, not being able to get out to Dollar Tree? Yeah, I'm still not going out yet. Not yet. Like I'd mentioned before, I, I don't miss a lot of places. I mean, everybody's going to Hobby Lobby, and they're finding some fantastic clearance deals, but, you know, everything happening, I'm like, I'm good. Um, but I do miss Dollar Tree. Oh, my. I miss my Dollar Tree. All kidding aside. Let's see. Has this ever happened to you, y'all? When you've got something like this, and the little straight pen that's stainless steel or whatever so it won't rust has the little pearl on the top. Have you ever tried to pull it out and the pearl comes off? That happened yesterday and I was I was like, no, 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 no. And then I thought, what am I going to do? How am I going to fix it? And so how I fixed it when the glue doesn't want to come out was get out my glossy accents and... Uh, a little bit too much on there. Um, got out my glossy accents and just put the top back on with that. With glossy accents, you know, it's pretty. That's some pretty strong stuff. 
Oops, I don't need to do that yet. This is, um, this glue is art glitter glue. I still haven't warmed up to the bare glue yet. I think I told you it messed up one of my, well, not entirely, but it didn't do a great job on one of my projects. And I'm like, oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, no. So now that we've got that, again, thank you, Maida. Aren't these cute? Normally, I have bags already. Normally, I just use a bag that's already made or a little envelope, you know, like this. It's already made. But with everything matching, and y'all know I love my bees, you can tell, so much that, you know, <laughs> I wanted to do, I wanted to make these to match. Okay. And inside the card goes one in our antique bronze color, one B in silver, one B in our gold, and one in rose gold. And they are different. I think when I was taking them out during the haul, I was humming and hawing, thinking, oh, my eyes deceiving me, but they're different. Then we close it with this little bumblebee paper clip. And these are so tight that you kind of have to manipulate them a little bit. But you don't want to manipulate them too much. See, it's like, oh no you don't. And what's so cute is the little bumblebee's legs go over the front of it. See how cute that is. And if I'd only gone in the middle, <laughs> there we go. So that fits into the pocket that we're about to do. All right, and here's, you can tell I've been fussy cut. Well, this was actually a die that um, I used on that, but everything else, all these little circle stuff you see, I've been um, fussy cutting out bees left and right. Let's maybe do this first. Here's our, here's the one we're working on now. And that's from the paper pad. And then this, hopefully I'll get, keep it away from my, this is a Martha Stewart punch I got over two years ago at Tuesday morning. And when I did this in pink for a project for Christy, Christy R. Crafts, and she thought they looked like um, a tropical flower. And I can see where she's coming from. I always thought they looked like pansies. But, you know, I can see where, where she's coming from, too. I know the one, she, it's not a hibiscus. I know what she's talking about, but I forget the name of the flower. But I've gone over, because I thought it takes me a while to, you know, glue down intricate punches like that. And um, so what I did is just put it and cut it to match our edges. This, I did the ink on this with the violet and the broken china on that one too. Went around the edges in the uh, vintage photo. Just the front here and then thought we'd do this around the sides. I have used this so much I don't have to blot my ink pad here. Or whatever this is called. Not an ink pad. What is that called? Foam ink applier. <laughs> but, you know, normally if it's a new one, you just have to blot it or your ink. Or, you know, go down here and then move over. But this um, is not dry yet, as you see. But it's not at all like it used to be. I'm just doing the edges on the outside of the card. I'm not going to do it on the inside. I have a tendency to like to draw my corners out a little bit here. It's just fun for me. Because I like the look. It's 
There we go. I don't have anything fascinating to talk about, y'all. <laughs> I've had several people say I like your story, but I don't know what story to tell. I would love, if you all know where I can get a Martha Stewart scoreboard that's smaller, I would love to have it. Because I got this one years, well, that was over two years ago too. And I have a, I had a little scoreboard, just a tiny little thing that I use for my cards all the time. And y'all, I'm not making this up. If it was, if let's say your piece of paper was four inches so you and you wanted to score it in the middle and you went to two. So help me Hannah, every time I'd fold it, it, it would be off every single time. So at one point I thought, am I just not doing this right? So I tried over and over again to the same result. So I was like, forget this, I don't want it anymore. <laughs> so what we're going to do, this is my um, going to be our little pocket on the inside. Maybe I need to move this up a little bit here. And um, I don't know if y'all can, can y'all see me? Uh, not yet. All my stuff's going to have to move, but let's see here. Ooh, I don't want anything to come off the table. But um, what I'm doing is just scoring the sides um, a quarter of an inch. You know, so when I measured what I wanted it to be, you all know this, um, I just added... Um, to the width of it, I added a half an inch, and to the um, height of it, I added a quarter inch. Because you're only going to score one side to the pocket. I'm sorry I'm not in frame. But if I did that, I don't have a huge table here. It would, the things I have over there, they just fall off. <laughs> and some of them really need not to fall off. And if darling Judy from my scrapbook loft is here, there's my mountain sugar. There's my mountain. Y'all need to go if you, if you have time. If you have a chance, she does uh, what she calls Tutorial Tuesday Lives. And I'm not lying. When, when Judy gets going, you know how normally we're you know, on a live, you're just going to town, just typing and typing and, and saying this, that, and the other. And um, when it comes to Judy, when she really gets going on her scrapbooks, we, it gets quiet. Nobody's typing. Nobody's nothing. Everybody's just listening, you know. So we're going to cut our, um, you know, our little uh, excess paper here on the corners. Woo! And um, then I'm going to put, I, I keep this beside me, but I have to go around a fan. We don't have AC. We have... Um, like a portable AC, but not in a craft room. It wouldn't even fit in the craft room. My craft room is tiny, but I thank God I've got it, so I'm not complaining. But it is tiny. You know, when people say, here's my craft room tour, I'm like, dang, baby. That is fantastic. <laughs> the truth, I tried to do one once, and all I could do was stand in the doorway and say, here. Yeah, that, there it is. There's my craft room. <laughs> oh, mercy. And that's another tip that uh, Judy told us last night when you're doing your pockets and stuff. That make sure that your bottom... And Judy, correct me if I'm wrong. I thought I heard you say we need our bottom over our sides, not our sides over the bottom over our bottoms. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. It's still child-friendly. It's still child-friendly. 
So then what I do here, now you know how everybody, I love it when you watch a, a craft with me or whatever, and they say, I just eyeball it. Now remember, you all know this if you've been here before, I ain't eyeballing nothing. Because in the past when I tried to eyeball something, guess what? Mm -hmm. It was definitely not the middle. I mean, it wasn't way far away, but it mm -mm, enough to bug you. You know, so we're dealing with the middle right here. So I do mark it. Because it's going to go away. It's, you know, nobody's going to see it. And if somebody was going to see something I needed to mark, I have this um, paper mate put out this white pearl. Oh, isn't it pretty? Yeah, that's so pretty. But um, it gets off your pencil marks real well. But what we're going to do so that in case the recipient is like, how am I supposed to get this out of here, corn? We're just going to do this. And put this in the middle of here as best as possible Whee! and it goes a flying but you can catch it all right so we got this going my phone is going crazy that's my Toby asking a few questions she doesn't know that I want to do this before the storm hits it's getting awfully dark out I hope you can hear I'm awfully loud I hope you can hear me over this fan but let's do this. So we've got we've got this made. Now let's start working on this front. I already did my die cut, and my die cut machine can't fit in the craft room either. It's uh, in the hallway, y'all. So I did mark a tiny spot there because if I don't put something exactly where I want it, I'm not happy. And I put a tiny mark here, and then. Oh, wait a minute. That's not my mark. What is my mark for there? There's my mark for that one. What's that hoodly do? That ain't right. My marking's wrong. There's that one. And then this one should be up here. Uh -oh. Well. Close. Yeah, I went, I guess the, I guess the ink covered up my little mark. <laughs> Alrighty, so we've got, we've got that. I went ahead and uh, fussy cut this little B out to put on here. Say hello. I have a B on our head. I didn't know if I needed him here. Even though he's awful close to this one. As you see, the artist sometimes did brown. And sometimes did black for the bees. There's different kinds of bees. And this paper right here is telling you some of them. I had to cut it where it said bumblebee. Because you know Handsome and I love our bumbles. We love them a lot. So. Alright. So let's do that. I think it's cuter looking. You know going towards the head though. Let's do that. So, I don't know about y'all, but when I use art glitter glue, I ain't lying. If I put it down, unless I put a ton of it on there, it doesn't want to move. It's like, okay, we're done. But when I use the Fabri-Tac, it does great. But this little bottle, see, we're down to here. And this little bottle, almost all my bottles of Fabri-Tac, once I get down a certain way, they misbehave, y'all. Seriously, they do. They're like, hmm... I'm not happy. And then this little bubble of glue is on top and it drives me crazy because I'm always wiping that bubble off. And um, see, because even this, there was a bubble there. That's why I'm going to try to clean it off. And um, I don't know about y'all, but I love it that now the Fabri-Tac will let you fiddle it around till you get it where you want it. But I personally don't think art glitter glue does. I like art glitter glue, but I don't think it, it does what I want it to do. Look at the back of this one, y'all. Can you see that sheen now? Oh, that's just so pretty. That's just daggone pretty. So let's see. I And I thought, what is the science behind this bubble? So I thought maybe pressure was built up on the inside. So I keep taking the top off, cleaning around the edges, put it back on. And it'll bubble up right, you know, almost immediately again. And I'm like, come on, y'all. What is going on? Let's 
see if it does it this time. So here's my my mark here. Whoop, whoop. I got to go over a little bit. And guess what? That's wrong. I made a boo boo wrong. So I got to redo this. <laughs> la, 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 la. Yeah. Oh. Uh, it's like Judy says, if you made a mistake, guess what? Just correct it. Just get up there and do what you got to do. She said you don't have to start all over. Remember I placed them the other way before. Alrighty. Okay, now... Now we're okay. No, I'm not. Oh, for Pete's sake, what is my problem? I don't feel right, so I guess that. Here we go again, y'all. This poor thing's going to be built up so much with fabric tag, but at least I can take it up. What is my problem, y'all? <laughs> oh. Did I have it like this? Did I have it this way? Oh, I like that way. All right, now, here. Here is the right way, y'all. Holy mac my roll, as we say back home. Then a little bit of that goo came out because it's like, what the heck are you doing? In fact, I'm going to do a little rock and rolling, y'all. Let's rock and roll on top of it. Make sure it stays down, behaves itself. See, you can still there. Let's see. Thank you. <whistles> Baby. And it's still okay. See? <laughs> Except I've got a lot of glue on me now. I was used to putting them down. You saw on that other card a certain way. Can I use that as an excuse? I'm going to say that's my excuse, y'all. <laughs> oh, mercy. Okay. I can't believe I messed it up twice. You know? It's like, seriously, what in the hoodly do is going on? see my phone out I put it out in the hallway it's just Toby's just going to town hopefully her daddy will he's working but he crossed the hall but he's working so hopefully he'll tell her what's happening but I'm in here filming he knows I had to ask him first if he had a phone call there we go. Because, oh, there's that bubble, y'all. See? And I know other people have had that happen, too. It's like, what? Like I said, the only thing I can think of is that um, there's pressure built up in that bottle. That's the only thing I know what's happening. And then this one, more like, so. Okay. Alrighty. So, and there's looky, looky. All right. I've got this really icky old 
baby wipe it, see? And then if you take this off, you release. But see, normally this is kind of had some dried glue on it, so I thought maybe that's what was going on, but mm -mm. I'm not sure what's happening. If you're like me, I'm using it to the end. <laughs> We're still going to do that. And let's see, is my B cuter here? I think so. I tell you, these are so precious, but they're not a lot of fun to cut out. I have to cut them off the camera because I have to get them, you know, so close to me in order to see what I'm doing. Okay. I see this cute little bee coming down. Now, so there's our bees. Can you all see they put glossy accent on some of them? Not on these, but on those. I keep. I put glossy accents on some also, but and not on here because this paper is so glossy to begin with. So we've got this going. So let's do our pockets here. I hope I'm in frame, y'all. If I'm not, I apologize. Maybe like so. Like so. Even the other side of the paper is pretty. That's when you know you've got good paper. And it's all pretty. Oops. Stay on the paper cone. Maybe over here. And make sure that's straight. Remember, I am not good at straight. I really respect and a little bit jealous of people who are, but oh, that's not me. Straight line, straight placement, straight cutting. I'm like, what? <laughs> Alrighty. This is probably dry, especially in this heat. Let's see what happens. There we go. And see, which just reminds you that bees go to the flowers and then they make, go to the honeycomb, make some honey. Okay, so cute. So cute. The bees. I just love bees. So then I was thinking, speaking of the flowers, there's a periwinkle blue that I punched out. And I'm gonna die cut a little this little bee going to it maybe. Or would it be cute to just kind of offset it, have it in the corner, and then have the bee going to it? Let's do that. I like it, not center. So what I do is I do the two punches 
then make them so these petals go in between the others. Keep this flat, put it on there, and then raise the other petals. Like I said, and as you all know too, when the recipient gets it, it's all going to be smushed, but maybe they know to put the petals up. I, I hope. I think that would be nice if they did. Let's do that. And then I just go underneath these petals and push it, push those down so they stay put. I think this is the cutest bee of all of them. Look at that fat behind. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Do I love working with this? This thing, this paper, this everything, yes. Um, and like I said, this was in my haul, but I will list the name of the paper pad in case you all are interested down below in the description box. All right, so to, to finish this off, we could do our, our punch, the whole punch. Um, we could do that. Ooh, my glue wants to dry up. It's just too hot in here. But I'm going to do the liquid pearls and hopefully do an okay job because I have to get it close to me, y'all. I hope. And I have to take my glasses down. So I hope you, I'm in frame. If I'm not, um, my apologies. But when it comes to this stuff, I need to do this. There we go. That has to dry. There is a possibility that later um, I will do a die cut with this, maybe a larger one in this design to write on, but I'm not sure. That's why I didn't go ahead and do it. These need to dry right now, even though two of them are already spreading a little, but that's okay. I went ahead and um, punched this out and um, wrote on this for the back, but I'm not gonna do it now since I just did the liquid pearls. <laughs> I was going to do it, guys, but I'll do it later. And normally I fussy cut out a little B, another one, um, to come down towards this and around there I go around it and then I write with it this time being on printed paper I had to trace it, do it twice this is in Tombow marker 533 that is this is how you know you're dealing with periwinkle blue I was like oh that looks like periwinkle blue to me and when you take it look it looks purple that's because that red in there with the blue, that's what it gives you. Purple. So, it's tickled that I did have that. But I'm going to have to set these guys. So, again, here's what we did on the inside. Here's what we did on the outside. We might do or might just write on that. I'm not quite sure. We will put this with this. Leave this open over here behind me on the radiator. That's where it goes, y'all, on the radiator. <laughs> and we'll do the, um, just very simply do our envelope. Just a little, just a little something on the envelope. Um, I fussy cut these out of the paper, too. This one, look at the back side. The back side is the one that has all the stuff about different kinds of bees and different, like, also the queen bee and a worker bee and all that good stuff too. And what I do is I just cut around that so it's just a few little hives in the corner. And I don't ink around that. And I'm not sure why I haven't been doing that. I guess because I think it's pretty as it is. I like it.
Now, are y'all thinking, corn, you don't know why you do something? Yes, I think it's pretty like it is. I love craft paper. I, I always have. I don't think I remember a time where I was like, ew, I don't like it. I've always liked it. So, let's put this down here in the corner. You know how we have to get those stamps that say, basically, you can't put this through a machine. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. I've paid extra. Talked to the lady at the post office. She said, yes, it's fine. And when someone put it on their video, you could definitely tell it had been put through the machine because my image on the front was actually pressed into the back. And I was like... Oh, oh, I was mad, y'all. There's not a pretty way to say it. I was mad. But remember, I just told Handsome. Handsome heard about it when I came home. I said, look at, you know, when he came home at the time, this was months ago, I was like, what happened here? This is just that same punch you saw me, the EK Tools punch that did um, for our little... Uh, there's this one. It's the same one that I did for the inside of this daisy. Well, there goes my punches. <laughs> I'm graceful today. Um, and all I did was this. these daisies. I've been putting these on all of my envelopes because I just love them. This is a Martha Stewart punch. And I got this, like I said, that's over two years old, too. And what I do, like I said earlier, is I just get my mustard seed, distressed ink out, my little dauber, and we go around it first like so. Let it dry for, you can see I've been having fun doing it a lot. Let it dry for a little bit. Talk about the weather again. <laughs> Then go for it again. And this time, um, only like halfway up. I want to leave that top for like um, a little highlight, if that makes any sense. That's what I do. Alrighty. And what else I do is, that should be dry now. This has a little, let me see if I can get this on. It has like a little piece of my dauber. I want it to stay there. I shall get it out. There we go. That looks better. All right. And so because this has, this daisy has the holes in it. There's so many cool things you can do with those holes, as you all know. But I'm not going to do it today. Um, I go ahead and this is just a piece of, I don't know, something. Packaging. You can see I use it for all sorts of things. But um, it's slick. And so I just put it on there because this glue is going to go through these holes. And there we're keeping that light at the top. And yes, maybe I should glue the um, daisy on first and then do this. But I don't know. This is the way I'm doing it. <laughs> Does it make sense? Mm. Yes. To me, <laughs> to me maybe, oh Lord, to y'all maybe not so much. And of course, as you know, with those holes, gonna wanna stick it a little. So that's what I do. I guess because I want everything to look so so before I commit. You know, now I'll commit. So we're gonna put that like this, so I can have my return address up here, their address here. And isn't that cute? See the little holes? There's so much you can do with string and and um, 
twine and everything else with those. I'm just not doing them on the outside of an envelope, you know. I need to get closer to the ends, too. Okay. With my glue. And there we go. I'd like to thank y'all for coming and visiting. If y'all stayed the whole time, but God love you. <laughs> and you got patience of Job. <laughs> We're going to put that on later. Maybe put a piece over here, too. Here's what we did on the inside, waiting for that liquid pearl to dry. Here's on the outside. It's not touching my flower right now, so we're all good. And I'd like to thank you all so much for joining me today. And I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening. Bye-bye, everybody. Take good care. <laughs>